Over the course of the battle, there were 500 artillery pieces on the field. And from morning to night, they estimate there were probably a shell a second fired, on average, during that day. Well, today we're uh, at Antietam uh, Battlefield Park. It's a national battlefield park, and uh, just very briefly, we've got the best view of all the areas from here, but um, at this stage, the Confederates are on the high ground over here, but the battle opens up from the North Woods, some distance above the Dunker Church, shown here. So, while this was going on in the morning, there were other Union soldiers coming up right down there where you see the farmhouse, and they met skirmishers from the Confederate side, directly uh, to uh, the right of the camera and engaged, and so that whole uh, group pushed the Confederates back to what is called the Sunken Road, maybe around 10.30 in the morning. And you can see with uh, in the distance there's an observation tower, and the Sunken Road are the, the uh, wooden fence uh, uh, across from each other down there. I'll try to get a little closer. But in any case, we're, uh, we're going up to that area uh, later this morning. And finally, uh, all morning, Cleland is trying to get across with Burnside's divisions down here in the direction of uh, the what is known now as the Burnside Bridge. They're trying all morning to cross that bridge or cross the Antietam Creek. And uh, then by late afternoon, uh, they do get across. Lee is in a great deal of danger at this point in time. But finally, Hill comes up from uh, Harper's Ferry late in the day and uh, saves the day uh, by uh, hitting Burnside's men in the late afternoon. And the battle closed for the day. Uh, basically, it was a, a Union victory, I guess, because uh, uh, Lee, after dark, the day after the battle, left the field and crossed the Potomac River. The uh, visitor center we see right here, but uh, rather a, a rambling uh, commentary, but uh, we see the Burnside area here, the sunken road right here, and uh, over in this direction where you can actually see a, cor a cornfield, but it's behind that. There's a little white marker uh, that you see, which is uh, the battle in the cornfield, which started in the first of the morning. Yeah took place between where we were standing at the visitor center and where the Union launched the attack in the North Woods. The cornfield sits right in the middle of that big rectangle, so the majority of the day's casualties were right in this cornfield. So we are um, right at the uh, Confederate line in the morning, facing the cornfield and the Union up to the left of the screen. So Jackson's line came uh, just on the other side of this road, all the way up through here, up into that woods over there. And uh, he was positioned this way to uh, take an attack either frontally from uh, behind, w w in the direction I'm facing, or this way into the cornfield. This was the bloodiest area in the whole battle, right here. And uh, many men were lost right at this point, over the morning and afternoon. So at the time of the battle, uh, where I'm standing here in the parking lot you see over here, was all cornfield. as is on the other side and the fence fencing that you see over there is where the sunken road was and uh, we're just going to go down there and uh, do some commentary and take a look at the sunken road when the uh, union soldiers that were coming across the uh, uh, cornfield heading towards the visitor center which you see way up on the hill there uh, they were the second flank was uh, 
the second group of them were turned and uh, in the cornfield and they headed towards firing which was at this sunken road and uh, this is where the second part of the morning battle uh, took place at the sunken road. Looking down onto uh, the original Burnside Bridge, the uh, Union soldiers were on the far side of the bridge from where I'm shooting, and uh, all day, all morning, until afternoon, they were trying to get across here and up this grade that you see here, where there were, at this point, four, about 400 Confederate soldiers fending off the entire army that Burnside had and up and behind where these 400 soldiers were up behind my back were the remaining forces of about 2,000 they had been depleted somewhat because Lee took soldiers from here to go and fight over at the Dunker Church where they were uh, much more needed and uh, A very strong defensive position for the Confederates, that's for sure. And a very difficult uh, crossing for the Union side over here. Well, here come the uh, additional troops that Burnside sending in uh, by water. You can see them coming down now as they approach the bridge. Well, just kidding, of course, but... Nice way to while away the day in the very hot 97 degrees Fahrenheit. On the Antietam uh, battlefield, uh, the way they indicate uh, fallen generals, and there were six of them in the battle that day. Uh, this was the last of them. He was part of A.P. Hill's uh, uh, relieving force at the very end, coming up from Harper's Ferry that attacked from uh, right in this uh, particular area. I'll just hold it to the So this one is in memory of Brigadier General L.O.B. Branch. Killed in action right here. A branch, the general who was shot here, was the uh, lead general on A.P. Hill's uh, group of soldiers coming up down this road. And uh, he was leaning up in his horse to survey the situation and was shot. Uh, and killed here. Now here we're at the uh, final part of the day and on this side all the way through here across the road and up on that crest over there are the Union soldiers from Burnside across the bridge over the Antietam Creek and ended up here in and around uh, four o'clock coming down the road up here, A.P. Hill from Harper's Ferry arrived and at this point he had about 2,500 uh, troops and uh, the Confederates that were up here and they were retreating against the Burnside attack were about another 2,500. So there were about 5,000 Confederates and about 10,000 Union soldiers here at the very end of the day but because Hill arrived and was surprising the Union soldiers. Uh, the force of the 5,000 against them down through the back through the cornfield here was enough to shock them and uh, stop them from uh, uh, their uh, enveloping uh, Lee's line. And the Confederates pushed them back up to that ridge of trees uh, as it turned dark. And that was the end of the Battle of Antietam. So this is uh, how far the Burnside Bridge is down to our left, where this final battle of the day uh, took place. And what you see here is the original church. It blew down in a windstorm in 1921, as it was in a weakened state by this time. Much of the material, the wood and the brick, was kept in a barn for years and then was 
given or purchased by the Parks Board and reassembled. So it's a reconstruction, but uh, most of it is uh, is original uh, original uh, design from the Civil War. Now there's one other uh, interesting uh, factor which I believe is at the back of the church. It's some uh, graffiti written by, I believe, a Union soldier, and it's on the back of the church. Where I'm just going to go up and take a look and see if I can find it. Well, this is the back of the church, and uh, sure enough, uh, there's the uh, graffiti. Henry Winters, New York. Carved at the time of uh, the battle.